Sup, Nerd Migos, and the Jive Talking Nerd, John Norgrove. We've got Wife here. We're here for another review jive. Uh, last night was Terrible Movie Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So we, um, it was not our choice, but we watched Tall Girl. Whenever you say that, I'm always like, shade. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Anywho, we watched Tall Girl on Netflix, which came out last year in 2019. And uh, let me read the thing real quick. Yeah. Uh, when the tallest girl in high school falls for a handsome foreign exchange student, she becomes embroiled in a surprising love triangle and realizes she's far more than her insecurities about her height have led her to believe. Uh, well, I wouldn't which, say that's wrong, So, but... s s spoiler free, it's okay. You can watch it's it. It's alright. Yeah. If you're looking for, like, a teen rom-com with, like, some girl empowerment self-love messages behind it, like... This is yeah, I, a thing that you want to watch. It exists and it does those things, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you have seen this, let us know below what you thought of it. Um, uh, and uh, let's, let's say, and who's you your favorite character? Then go watch it. Yeah. And then or continue tell us why you afterwards. Or tell us why you haven't watched it. And yeah. then just watch our review and that'll be fine. Because really, it's not it's not worth your time. It's, it's really not. Uh, no, okay, don't, so, don't do spoiler <laughs> spoiler time. Spoiler time. All right. Um, this is the problem with this movie. We're just gonna, we're gonna jump into problems first. Main problem with this movie, full spoilers. Um, it's, she's, she's really, like, the only person who, who, like, for the second half of the movie has an issue with her height. Like, the guy yeah. she has a, da a, a crush on is like, yeah, tall girls are fine, whatever, right? And her best friend and the, like, boy who has a crush on her are like, yeah, you're tall, who cares? And her parents and her older sister, who's like a fucking beauty queen, who is... Like, literally, actually a beauty like, queen. Like, she, like, competes in beauty pageants and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and wins them. Uh, is, like, super supportive, and her parents are super supportive, and it's, like, one mean girl... And her mean guy friend, who yeah. by the second half of the fucking movie, the mean guy friend is like openly admitting to having a crush on her. So it's yeah. one girl. And even then, like the girl kind of backs off on the like tall girl hate. Yeah. And really gets into more of a like, why you touching my man? Like, what you got pretty yeah. up, you think you can fight me? Because kinda that is hate. part of this... Well, I, I don't know that love triangle. There's kind of like two love triangles. It's, a, uh, it's part of one of the love triangles. Her and the mean like girl a fifth dimensional are vying pyramid. for the same hot guy. Yeah. So, uh, so okay. So the story is about this girl who's really tall. And yeah. everybody is mean to her because she's really she's tall. She's so tall. Uh, and by everybody, I mean like four people. Uh, yeah. They <laughs> spend she, a lot of time building up this, like, mean to the tall girl thing. And they don't do a good job. And that she's ugly and stuff, but, like... But she's, she's not ugly. She's literally uh, just wearing frumpy clothes and has a ponytail. You know, the thing that every they, girl dude, who's not supposed this, to be hot that ends up being hot in these kind of movies This movie literally has. just has her not wearing coveralls. Because, like, the, in the beginning of the movie, so, so first third of the movie, she's, like, real hunched over, like, yeah. big blue... Like, painter's coveralls, ponytail. Big baggy hoodies. Right, right yeah. yeah, like that kind of thing, right? So, so she goes to a high school. Everybody makes fun of her because she's tall by being like, what's the weather like up there? And uh, her best friend is this, like, short, like, pink and blue and black kind of uh, Her best kind friend of chick. is the best like, part like, of she, the She's always wearing, like, bright movie. colors in her hair and yeah. stuff. And her best friend is, like... Fierce loyal. It's oh just, my god, like, her best like friend is... Opening, yeah. Cold open to her best friend. Somebody's walking by... She's talking to her best friend and somebody's like walking by the lockers. You know, like how you just walk past people and you just say shit to them, like mean shit to them. You know how that works? And so somebody's just like, well, what's the weather like up there? <laughs> and then fucking bounce... And like goes to bounce. And her best friend fucking puts this dude in his yeah. place. It's just like, I'm sorry, motherfucker. What are you... And just goes into yeah. this guy. Yeah, her best friend. She's the best is, character of this fucking. The best character. She is the most. The best friend in the system. Savage ride or die best yeah. friend. Yeah, and she's and like super supportive, like, and she's super nice. I have nice. a best friend like that, and I'm just like, girl, I love you so much. After watching this movie. So so best friends like get the fuck out of here with that yeah. lame ass joke shit, 
Right, and then like they go into class, and this like hot Swedish dude gets like they're like we have He's a new foreign exchange student, and it's a hot Swedish dude, and she's like, oh my god, I'm in love with him, and like all the other girls in class are like, oh my god, I'm in love with him, and then cut to the end of the school day, um, and her other friend, who is her guy friend, who's like in love with her, but not who secretly, is <laughs> very openly every day asks her to be married and have his children in love with her. Uh, he carries his books in a crate. Like a milk crate. Like a milk, well, like, like a, a wooden, wooden milk crate. crate. Yeah, like an orange crate. Um, yeah. But, uh, so like he's, not like, color, he's like, like weird and fruit. kooky and a nerd. So those three are friends, and she's just like, oh my god, I'm in love with this foreign exchange Swedish kid. And then the nerd kid, the nerd boy, decides to go home, and his mom goes to pick him up, and the Swedish kid's sitting in the car, and the mom's like, guess what, surprise, we're having this kid stay with us. <laughs> Which I feel like is not how foreign exchange that students work. That is not how foreign exchange students work. And also is a fucking huge dick move on his mom's part. Yeah, right? sure is. Could you imagine surprise... Adult Surprise, just living like, with you sibling now. Sibling for a year. Yeah, it's it's weird Out that nowhere. he wasn't involved in any of the conversations because yeah. it's not like a you don't just you don't just like go to the airport and you're just like oh, give yeah, me two of those. Like, it's not it's not the it's fucking not like that. it's not the it's not like section. a sushi boat. Thing. Yeah, no, it's not sushi boat of foreigners. That's not how that works. But uh, so sushi boat of foreigners. Uh, put on a t-shirt. But uh, so that's. <laughs> So, so he's like, he's like, ah, I'm not into this because the girl that I'm in love with is in love with him. And then all, whatever the fuck happens. So anyway, the hot guy comes to school the next day. All the girls decide to hit on him at the same time. And then the one popular girl wins the hitting on him or something. Yeah. By like staring down all the other yeah, girls what, at the what, table. What, listen, yeah. none of the ways in which anything happens matters. This yeah. movie is, it's okay. It's not based on a book. It's a YA style movie with almost no logic to it and horrible character yeah. writing and just horrible decision making. Yeah. And it also feels a lot like a 45 year old wrote it. Well, who to me, is not, the nor biggest... has been around high school aged people in a fucking world. Yeah. To me, <laughs> the biggest thing that I didn't like about this movie, first of all, full disclaimer, this is not normally the kind of movie that I would choose to watch myself. So She's I not found into the thing. that I struggled watching this like a lot because I would really rather watch a slasher movie than a YA or a, you know, romance kind of movie. It's just not my jam. Some YA. So though. but some YAs overall, have slasher. That's true. Uh like Tucker and Dale. Rom-com slasher. I would not call that uh, a YA, but... <laughs> not YA. I also um, wouldn't call it a rom-com, but, but that's But the thing totally that I okay. struggled the most with this is that this movie felt to me like the show Pen15 felt. And I was really uncomfortable watching Pen15 because it was basically like someone who is like my age or like a little bit like around my age, and I'm like 40. Um, oh God, I can't believe I just Adjacent. said that out loud. Uh, anyway, uh... I, like I, I felt like it was like someone who was my age trying to live out their situation as a like awkward middle schooler or high schooler. And so to me, the main character didn't feel like she was like a high schooler, even though I think she technically actually is. None of the characters a high schooler, were written but, like, like high school. She felt like an adult living in a high schooler's world. And the thing that I didn't like the most about Pen15 is that made me really uncomfortable it's, because it felt like adults taking advantage of kids um, it's, uh, in romantic and and, and well, emotionally manipul manipulative pin, ways. Pin, and that's how this movie felt pin, to me. Pen15 and this movie are very different. In Pen15, you have a bunch of, you have two adults yeah. basically hitting on children. That's a fucking weird movie. TV show TV thing. Show. Don't, don't watch it either. Uh, but so th in this movie, everybody's what we're going to assume all around the same age, yeah. right? There's no like adults being creepy or nothing like that. But the problem is, is that this was written very obviously uh, by adults in a fashion where they were reminiscing about their high school experience. So and it, it's, not like how a high school experience would be now. Or, or how their high school experience was either. This is very like if somebody only knew high school from sitcoms yeah. and, and then decided to write this like sort of involved emotional piece in the form of like a YA love triangle story 
but without really making anything feel like young people are involved. So you have these young people making like weird quips at each other yeah. and referencing shit that is like not at all yeah, makes like sense at for one them point, to watch. The main character and the guy that she's crushing on are talking about their love of musicals and they're like, guys and dolls, cats. Yeah. And I was just like, what's guys and dolls? <laughs> it's that, that aside. It, it's, it's just that th this was very clearly written in an adult manner. Yeah. And I don't mean like sexually or something like that. I just mean like the way that you and I as adults talk. Yeah. But it's children doing the talking and yeah. acting. And it, it's just off-putting yeah. because so often these kids are saying or doing shit that like a kid would not do yeah right and in addition to that it this is uns you know all of these problems are are supported by this like faulty foundation where the movie is makes weird fucking choices there's a ton of music in this movie and yeah. it's not bad but, like, music the location but, it's the movie takes place in new orleans but it's not i am not from new orleans but as best as i can tell it is not a visual representation of new orleans nor do any of the characters have an accent well, that would the, indicate that the they live accent there. thing is very is weird. whatever people are you know you can't teach people how to do accents easily kind of a thing like that's hollywood forgivable but but the 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 problem is is that the foundation of this whole movie relies on this idea that um like the the situations that are happening have some sort of value and consequence and they just don't no, there's nothing that that's really fully thought out in this movie all the characters are just like like make choices because they have to there's a lot of big reachy well, bald yeah. eagle shit and and again we get back to the music choices in this movie are hey um uh we've seen guardians of the galaxy and we've seen suicide squad and those have these big bombastic soundtracks that are moderately interactive with the movie we should do something similar so you have these weird musical numbers in the movie a few of them involve dancing a few of them involve singing a few of them involve somebody in the movie playing one of the instruments in the song yeah but, but and a few of but them it, involve like um you know compilations right but 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 none of it has any bearing on the plot and it's just like what if for like a little bit in the movie there was we just took a fucking music break honest to god it feels like commercials almost for music. Yeah, it does. Which is weird. It feels like they're trying to sell you the soundtrack to this movie. It's a little just like a like an odd but musical this, interlude because yeah, most of the time but, they don't really match up or make sense with what's happening yeah, in the story. Yeah, or, or they're, they're doing a musical montage of them doing some stuff. Yeah. But it's like not that much stuff that they even accomplish. And it's the one musical montage. And the rest of the music is either just background music that's really loud or or somebody dancing to a song but why it, it, all of this movie feels like a group of people came together and made decisions based on other movies successes and then tried to formulate a YA movie out of it and, and it, yeah. it clearly comes across as subpar yeah. um but so this fucking love triangle develops where like so the 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 foreign exchange student starts dating the hot girl and then the tall girl decides to hot up by like literally just wearing regular clothing and pulling her hair down yeah um that's it that's uh, it she wasn't like a mutant or like a freak yeah. or anything yeah. like that and then and the hot honestly, guy and then the hot guy whatever. is like I'm the hot guy you, says that he's in love with her uh but he's still dating the girl and, he, and then he starts doing a lot of weird red flaggy shit Dude, i'm gonna be honest yeah with you. this hot guy is like super red girls. flag the whole time he's actually. just like he's like like she's like i'm so in love with him and he's like i'm gonna break up with the girl and come to your thing and then like doesn't and he's like i'm super sorry like I totally forgot yeah which is like whatever people forget but it's just like stacked upon stacked upon stacked yeah with, with other shit that's happening that he's doing and that she's hearing about that he's doing it, it like it very obviously leads her to fall in love with her little nerdy friend who to realize her appreciation for him which results in love and then of course the end of the fucking movie she's like 
she, you know, he's like, you always wondered, and I've never told anybody why I carry this box around. He flips it upside down and stands on it so he can kiss her. Which is like, whatever. It was obvious from the fucking beginning that that's what was going on yeah. there. Right? These characters are fucking flat. I mean, yeah. the friend well, is I mean, amazing, but she gets very little screen time. The sister is fucking incredibly supportive. Yeah. A good older sister. The parents very little are screen incredibly time. supportive. Her father, good there are parents. some heartbreaking scenes with her father. Where yeah. he just wants her to be happy. And and he worries about her and like, but he doesn't know how to fucking express it, you know. Yeah. But yeah. but even then, there, there's like this really heartwarming scene where where she just came home from the party and she's sad and all this kind of stuff. And the father comes upstairs. Yeah, that's gonna ring a lot. <laughs> wait, it's gonna keep doing it. And it's done. There, there we, we go. go. So <laughs> the, the father goes upstairs and it's like, hey, listen, honey, you know, like, I'm not going to bug you. I don't want to make you upset. I don't want to do anything wrong. I just want to say that I love you and I'm here if you want to talk. Yeah. And, and it's this, like, big emotional scene. And then, like, instantaneously while we were watching this, I realized and mentioned out loud, uh, the movie is relying on the fact that we as the audience understand that something bad happened at the party. Because yeah. if she just came home from this party having a good time and went to bed because it's fucking late at night yeah. Yeah. and didn't say something to her father, that would have been a weird thing for him to say to her. Right? Yeah. So the father made an assumption. And this isn't like the, a bad actor or anything like that. It's just that this movie relies very heavily on the audience having knowledge so that way the way characters make decisions makes sense. Because a character making that decision based on the knowledge that character has makes zero fucking yeah. sense right and this it happens very frequently in yeah. this movie now the thing that i think is actually good about this movie is the way that the relationship plays out with our main character and the hot guy so yeah. like she's in love with the hot guy and the hot guy's in love with her but already got into a relationship with the popular girl and, and it's so, like sketchy yeah which so then he's like i'm gonna leave her for you because like i want to be with someone that i care about and not just someone who's like super hot and he makes his commitment to go to her sister's uh, beauty pageant and with like her as a date and then afterwards they're gonna go to a different party with her as his date. Uh, all of this is contingent on him breaking up with the hot girl. He not only ghosts her, he doesn't, re you know, he like ghosts her, doesn't return any of her messages, doesn't show up to the beauty pageant. Yeah. So then she goes to the party by herself, finds him and is like, you haven't responded to me and he's like oh i'm so sorry i was helping set up this party and then i just lost track of time and then you also find out that he didn't break up with yeah the girl. he was like basically too busy to break up with the yeah. girl also so but, well no no so so then he so then she leaves she's upset and later on you find out that at the party the the hot girl is like what were you talking to tall girl about in the kitchen and he was like oh just nothing like she said she was in love with me but i told her like I wasn't into that and it basically turns into him telling the hot girl like it's kind of like a play like he's basically telling the hot girl in front of literally everyone at this party how much he doesn't like her after the tall girl confessed her feelings to him yeah. and he well, confessed his feelings to the tall girl about him liking her and not liking the popular also, girl multiple times. so then the friend who's been in love with the tall girl the whole time uh, he comes out and he is like wailing on this guy he's really upset yeah, he he's like I love her she's not good enough for you blah 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 tall girl doesn't know this until at the very end of the movie the very end of the movie she watches this video clip of what's happening and then the hot guy like comes out immediately afterwards basically and is like I love you and I'm super sorry like can I can we start over can we make this work and yeah. she's just like yeah no yeah uh, so I really like that because in these movies, I find that you, like, your main character, especially the, like, oh, he's gonna pretend to be in love with her because of something, and then he actually falls in love with her. Like, those movies just have, like, a weird, bad taste in my mouth because it's, like, the guy, the, the person, they did something they shouldn't have done, they betrayed your trust, but this guy took it like an extra step forward so i'm really happy that she wasn't like yeah we can make it work you know because that's yeah. that's a really gaslighty and just awful thing to do to a person the way yeah. that this hot guy well, acted th they're doing and this thing i really where respect he's... them not going with the yeah. traditional <laughs> with those two ending up with each other I mean, now i, I do like it was also obvious that they have issues with together. her ending up with the friend who's in love with her the whole time because that sets weird precedents for 
people that you know that are, well, I like to call them skin wearers, but people that you know that are like in love with you that you aren't in love with. Like it sets a good precedent for the guy who was two-faced and it sets a bad precedent for the guy who was friend zone. And I just say guy because that's the, the gender, gender that person. they are in well, this movie. Well, I, I don't think but that the there's guy some really was problematic like, things I, happening I don't there. think that the, I don't think that the kid that was in love with her was like creepy or anything like that. I, I, I think it's that... It's creepy when you're on the receiving end. No, no, no. Regardless no. of how adorable well, it may seem in well, a movie. Well, the thing is, is that they were friends and like, okay, fine. He pushed a lot for like a relationship and, and whatever. But at no point in time did she really seem upset about the fact that he was pushing a relationship. That's true. Right? It, and and again, it's this like, okay, well, the foreign exchange student was, was like rude to her. But he was rude to her in such an obvious way. It, we're talking about these like they're characters, but they're not. They're, they're like single points within the story, mm -hmm. each one of these characters. And these are like fucking main characters here, right? The tall girl's whole beef is that she's tall. It has nothing to do with the fact that she's like actually super attractive and like doesn't have any other physical flaws. And like the fucking second she starts like dressing in nicer, nicer clothing, whatever, dressing in nicer clothing and puts her hair down or whatever the fuck, like the half the kids who are bullying her are on her fucking side. Everybody's yeah. supportive of her, but she's still downtrodden. And, like, the foreign guy is just rude to her, even though he's, quote, in love with her, you know, but multiple times. And the, and the friend is... Everybody's, like, the hyperbole form of their character trope, yeah. which I think is what's resulting in a lot of these, like, weird, awkward scenes. But, you know, I, I think... You know, we've kind of ranted about this long enough, but it, it's... It's that, it's not that this movie is bad. It's just that this movie is so poorly written that the acting wasn't able to make up for it. Right? And that's not the actor's fault. That's the writer's fault. And, uh, you know, this is that Netflix makes a lot of good stuff, but they also make a lot of dumb fucking stuff. Right? And this falls in that dumb fucking stuff yeah. category. Yeah. I don't think anybody should watch this. I think it's awful yeah right if you're gonna if you want to watch something that's ya like go watch twilight that shit has a better fucking plot don't watch which things i hate bananas. about you if you want to watch that you know? kind of two-faced thing but but um yeah you know what i think overall uh i would give this like one out of five yeah i'm right? giving this one star and the only reason i'm giving it one star is because of how supportive the older sister the family and the best friend were yeah. well they and were the even the guy who the, we didn't even talk about this the guy who had a crush on her like ends up getting in with the popular kids and starts dating this like sweet asian girl who basically like confronts him and is like listen he's like listen i'm super sorry like we can't keep this up i'm in love with somebody else and she's like yeah it's pretty fucking obvious dog like, you talk about it all the time. We know. And she's like, so, like, go. Be happy with her. That's fine. Like, she's like, S everybody except for the one mean girl, kind of. Because there are some redeeming qualities to her also, weirdly enough. But, like, everybody's super supportive and nice in this. It sort of devalues the whole, like, she's the, be like, you know, she's unloved and unliked thing. But, uh, you know, it's it's these, it's the small characters, these background characters. Yeah. That are what caused me to give it one star, which it sounds like it's the same thing for you. Uh, you know, it's not it's, so much it's the, the, the small background. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the family really the love and, and the, the support. supporting friends. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah. Yeah, so um, don't, don't, watch don't watch this. this. Yeah, don't watch this. Did if you, you have watch seen it, it comment tell below. us so what you thought. Like this video, as comment below. As a short below. girl, I don't understand what it's like to be ridiculed as being a tall person. Yeah, so she understands what it's like to be ridiculed as a, a short person. Yeah, it's the right? same fucking thing. And I'm just like, I use tall people for shade. What do you want from me? I'm a hobbit. Yeah. You know, tall people, like, what's your what's your favorite thing that people ask you when you are tall like how's the weather up there you know that no, kind of they thing just say, Would what's you grab your this favorite for me? Thing? and then you grab it for them and i'm not even that tall i'm only six feet tall i mean but still, he's like a lot taller them. than i and am you just you just bring it down there yeah i th also the whole she's tall thing is in my mind belittled by the fact that like short people go through the exact same thing just on the short side of the spectrum they make hobbit jokes as opposed to making tree jokes it, it's yeah it's the most bottom dollar way to write a fucking story is to choose one dumb character trait like that and center everything around it. But um, don't forget to like this video, comment below, share, subscribe, do yep. all that kind of stuff, ring the bell, what the fuck ever. Um, I've been John Norgrove, this has been Wife, this has been Review Jive, we watched Tall Girl, it wasn't that good. Um, yeah, and that was Terrible Movie Tuesday, so I guess fucking that just happened. It was a terrible happened. one. It was yeah. terrible, so damn.